So the only tools that you're going to need for this application is a socket wrench with a 10 millimeter and also the same time too a half inch socket. So after opening up the hardware something I noticed I absolutely loved is that Redline Tuning also added a little stamp on the side of their hardware and I found this absolutely awesome because I am a big stickler when it comes to having small little details and on top of it as well it gave it a beautiful gloss black finish to complement that stamp. So with that being said another tool that I did not end up mentioning that I'm going to need is a star head screwdriver because I have dress up hardware all the way across the side of my fender but we're not removing all this hardware. We're only removing the one that sits right here and also this little hole that you see up here we're actually going to make use for that and I'm glad that Ford ended up having that on there in case we wanted to do the option of adding a hydraulic shock over on our hoods. And what's also awesome as well that I already mentioned earlier and if you get stuck on anything you could also use this very colorful instruction book that tells you each step of the way of exactly what you need to do. So moving forward the first thing I ended up doing on that side that I'm going to replicate on this side that I found it the easiest to do is remove this bolt first and it literally takes no effort at all and once you do it should sit nice and flush right there. There we go. All right, so the next part that we're also gonna be throwing on as well is into this little big round circular hole right here. And you will see that there is this little like washer thing that goes on the bottom of this that you could spin and spin back to whatever direction you want. There's also a washer on there. And then you have this little ball joint looking thing on top of it that looks like a little Lego piece. And we're gonna go ahead and slide that into the hole to where this part right here, this little round cone shape will actually slide in and then it will just make itself flush. You actually have to loosen this up quite a bit so you can slide it into that hole but you want to be careful because if you do it too much you run the risk of this piece falling into the hood and on top of that as well when you do go ahead and put this thing in you want to push it down because if you don't push it down it's just going to continuously spin forever and it's just going to suck you want to keep spinning and that didn't work so once i got that piece in i'm going to pull down and i'm just going to twist but make sure you're doing lefty loosey righty tidy. When I say lefty loosey righty tidy, I mean do it to the right. Because if not, that piece is going to go straight in there and you're never going to see it again. And once you spin it, you'll eventually feel it get tight, which I'm currently feeling right now. So getting close to the final step of putting everything all together, we have to finally go ahead and tighten this thing up. And that's what we're going to do here. You want to push up on the hood and tighten this with the tool because again, this is still loose on the inside to an extent. So now we're down to the final pieces of the puzzle. We end up getting this bracket on down here at the bottom that's closest to this little big hole here and also the open hole that was on top of the hood where we threw in this little ball joint piece in. And then finally, we're gonna be throwing in this Jimmy John on right here, which we've all been waiting for, which I am super excited to see to match the side I've already done over on the passenger side of the car. Now this portion of this can get a little confusing depending on what side you started on first, but once you get one side in, this side seems to be pretty simple. And the reason for that is because you'll notice that your shock has a little bit of an angle on the back end of it, and you also have it just sitting up straight normally as it should on the skinnier side. Now, each side is different to their own way, so if you for whatever reason find it is difficult to throw this thing in, you'll realize that you probably end up putting it in the wrong way. You'll realize that you probably end up putting it in the wrong way. I am so glad to be getting rid of this thing because it's just been in the way the entire clip so far. And considering the fact that we have absolutely zero reason to have this hood prop anymore, we're going to go ahead and remove that to finally complete this whole project. Moment of truth. Let's hope that this thing closes and I have absolutely zero issues. Do your shit. Alright, alright. She closed, baby, she closed! I'm gonna pop that baby back open. You're welcome. How about that? Oh my god, I love that. A few minutes later. I personally made a pretty big mistake. <laughs> and I'm not going to remake all these clips and act like I did it right the first time. You'll realize that you probably end up putting it in the wrong way.
No. So what I ended up making a mistake on is I actually put this on backwards and the, most of the video already is gonna show that these things are on backwards, but the same principle still applies. So what you're supposed to see is the red line logo all the way across the side. So when you look at the car from the side view, you should be able to see the red line logo. So the thick part that's supposed to be closest to the hood and also the skinny part is supposed to be closer to the fender. How I originally installed them was like this, where the skinny part was on top and also the thick part was at the bottom. This is not the correct way to do it and you'll know that because the red line logo is not showing here because no brand does not want their logo not showing to the public and when you look at it from the side, you'll be able to see it from here. From this side, why are you gonna look at it from the inside of the engine bay to go look at that logo? That wouldn't make any sense at all. So that's the reason why that caught my attention and after looking at the instructions right here, it definitely said that I pretty much did this wrong. And for whatever reason, if you do run into the mistake of putting these things on backwards, there's a little clip that's on both ends that you'll see right here, it's like a little metal clip. You stick the flathead screwdriver in there, don't take the piece completely out or everything will fall out. Just get it to enough where it's loose, pull back on it and the whole piece should come out. And then when you wanna put it back in, the same process still applies when we put them in the first time and what's kind of crazy about it too is I'm so used to having that thing there the point where that one little tiny stick made it look like there is so much more room in this engine bay now and the hood shocks oh my god they just look good I am just, I'm so happy to have these pieces in. I really think that anybody who decides to put these on their car are gonna feel the exact same way as I do right now because they were good. You saw me just lift this bad boy up and it did its normal thing as if it's been doing it for 100 years, even though this car is only 10 years old. But with that being said though, I hope you guys all enjoyed this video as much as I did. I am happy that this is finally a reality because honest to God, this was just something that I've always contemplated, debated if I really wanted it, and I was like, what, what if I get an aftermarket hood one day? What if I do this? What if I do that? And I said, you know what? Screw it. That hasn't happened in the seven years of me owning this car. Eventually, one day we will, and in worst case scenario, I go ahead and buy the $90 hood struts once again. whoop de doo If you guys have any questions at all, you know exactly where to leave them. Thank you guys all so much for watching today's video, and I'll see you guys in the next one when we do stuff. Yes.